Although we are separated in our homes this morning, we have set aside this day to remember the day that the Lord died for us. Darkness covered the land that day as the light of the world was put to death. But forever we have the light of life because of what was accomplished by our suffering Savior. John 1, 1 to 14 says, In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through Him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Today we're going to be meditating in Isaiah 53. Isaiah wrote this portion of scripture 700 years before Jesus hung on the cross, but he gives us all the details of what the cross would mean. Mark chapter 10 verse 45 says this of the suffering servant. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Today we will consider each aspect of the cross and meditate upon it and worship our Redeemer who paid our ransom. Jesus despised and rejected by his own people. Isaiah 53 verse 2 and 3. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteem him not. Matthew 26 verses 57 to 75, Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they may put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is it that struck you? Peter denies Jesus. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, 
you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Stricken and forsaken by God, Isaiah 53, 4, 6, and 10. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned, each one, to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He, will, he has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt. He shall see his offering. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Mark 14, 32 to 41, and Mark 15, 33 to 39. Jesus in the garden. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. The death of Jesus. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema bachtani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who, was, who stood facing him, saw that he had breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Church, isn't it amazing to think that um, we are rebels deserving of wrath? But instead, we've received grace. We've received forgiveness from Jesus. Um, he was condemned so that we could be accepted. Let's worship in the face of that.
continuing with our meditations in Isaiah 53, let's look at verse 5. Jesus smitten, afflicted, and pierced. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Mark 15, verses 1 to 20. Jesus delivered to Pilate. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Pilate then delivers Jesus to be crucified. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd called up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him released for them, Barabbas, instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released them to Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Jesus is then mocked. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that's the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak and twisted together a crown of thorns they put on it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. Church, at this time we get to take the, the body of Jesus, um, of which he says, my body broken for you. So in the face of that, um, let's take this time to pray. Jesus, we thank you that you are a substitute, the perfect substitute, the perfect sacrifice for mankind. Um, you are a redemption for the fall of mankind. Lord, we thank you that for those who put their faith in you, we can have eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for taking our place on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you paid it all on the cross with your body broken for us. We are eternally grateful for that, in Jesus' name. And in the face of that, we can confidently take this bread as a remembrance, and we can eat, and we can confidently say that I am his, and he is mine. Verse 7 in Isaiah 53. Jesus, the Lamb, led to the slaughter. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth.
Luke 23, 26 to 46, the crucifixion. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it beyond Jesus. And there were following him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wom wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? To others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There will also an inscription over, his, over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we will indeed justify, for we are received the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The death of Jesus. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtains of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus called out with a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last.
Jesus took a cup and he said these words, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for many for the forgiveness of sin. Let's pray in thanksgiving for the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you for our meditations today that prophesied 700 years before the cross, all these details would be given to us about the suffering servant. Lord, thank you that we can, we can know the outcome of what took place 2,000 years ago. The outcome be forgiveness for the sinner and eternal life given freely. And Father, we are very grateful. Pray that as we take the cup today, we would be mindful of the great cost that was paid for our redemption and for our salvation, for our forgiveness. Lord, we take this cup and we think of your suffering, we remember you as we're invited to do so. And we do so with reverence and we do so in worship, with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's take the cup together. Jesus dies and is buried. Isaiah 53, 8 and 9. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as far as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence. And there was no deceit in his mouth. John nineteen thirty one to 42. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you might also believe. For these things that took place, the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones may be broken. And another scripture says, they will look on him who they have pierced. Jesus is buried. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave them permission. So they came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had earlier come to Jesus by night, came in, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there.
Our mood, obviously, today is one of somber as we consider Jesus' death. But we also rejoice in anticipation that Sunday is coming. For this is not the final note. Last meditation that we have today in Isaiah 53 comes from verses 11 and 12. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Revelation 5, 6 to 14. And between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing, as though it had been slain, with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard, around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive honor and power and wealth and wisdom and might, and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. 